Thank you. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here with you today. Uh, interesting uh, listening to the Lieutenant Governor telling that story. For those of us that have been here in Ohio, you know, many of us have a similar story in the last, especially in the last 20 to 30 years, as we've watched the state uh, slide, 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 and now we're seeing it for the first time in our lifetime and our generation, uh, where we can say that Ohio is the future and, and not have, uh, at least for the people that know, not have their eyes roll. And, and hopefully uh, we'll share some things with you today where you'll see the place to invest, to bring your teams, to bring your talent pool uh, and your great investment opportunities are right here in Ohio. Next chart, please. Next chart. So what I'd like you to take away of the many things that you're gonna hear about today, a uh, little bit about why Jobs Ohio is, is unique and why uh, Ohio is a great customer service business friendly state give you an impression of what's been happening in the last two years and what the outlook is for Ohio from an economic perspective. Uh, describe why there's a generational opportunity that we would love you to be a part of. And then uh, have you understand that uh, we do this through partnerships. Yes, Jobs Ohio is a unique platform. It is a unique platform, but uh, Ohio has an effective economic development model because it leverages Jobs Ohio to work very closely with the administration, uh, with the Department of the Development. We have Director Mahalik here. We work as a team and it's not just lip service. We work very closely together so we can present one face to the customer. So those are the takeaways from today. So a little bit about what Mark was referencing. Jobs Ohio is Ohio's private economic development corporation. Next chart, please. Oh, this didn't translate very well. Uh, there are four primary attributes that make us different, make, make the platform different. First, it's got the private structure. It's a C4, it was privatized in 2011. We're in our 10th year. All the board members are, are, not, are appointed by the governor of the state of Ohio. So it's private. I report up through a board. Next chart, please. Number two, we have a stable funding source. This is very important because many of the deals that we enter into, many of the deals and investments that you make have a long-term uh, strategic outcomes associated with them. We're able to enter into long-term strategic deals because we have a stable source of funding. In 2013, uh, the entity Jobs Ohio went out to the bond markets, raised $1.4 billion, deposited that money into the state treasury. We're still paying uh, uh, on that debt. Uh, and we use the profits from Ohio Spiritus Liquor Enterprise to fund our portion of economic development. So stable funding. Next, we have statewide coverage. And we do that through partnerships. There are six regional partners that are part of the Jobs Ohio Network. They're all independent organizations. Their boards uh, reflect the unique nature and makeup of their public and private sector leadership in each region. And frankly, over 80% of all the deals that we enter into at Jobs Ohio, over 80% of them are existing Ohio businesses from those communities that make the choice to expand here in Ohio uh, versus going to another state or another country to expand. So those partnerships are key. State level of resources, but delivered with a local touch. It's an effective model. And finally, oh, we also have 10, uh, we still maintain, uh, a presence in 10 international markets. Uh, those markets are where Ohio uh, has significant foreign direct investment interests. Uh, so we make sure for business development purposes, uh, we, we maintain uh, cons uh, consulting relationships. They used to formerly be state uh, appointed positions, but now we have consulting relationships. Prior chart, please. But the team at the center of this, the Jobs Ohio team, again, because we are private, because we have stable funding, we pull, uh, we pull our economic development team out of the private sector and we turn them into economic developers. Uh, so most economic development organizations at the state level um, are very effective using generalists, uh, but we're able to pull in uh, private sector experienced professionals 
uh, that are able to negotiate and understand the culture of each of the sectors, uh, maintain relationships with each of the sectors. Some of them are here today. Tyler Alchin, I saw him. Glenn Richardson is here from our manufacturing sector. Next chart, please. <clears throat> all the deals that Jobs Ohio enters into, and each of these deals, uh, not all of them, but almost all of them, there's a component, it's for Jobs Ohio incentive and a state of Ohio incentive. They all produce a return to the state. The way we calculate the return to the state is that the new tax from the new tax revenues, or the, the tax revenues generated by the new jobs always exceed the amount of incentive dollars that went into the deal. So I know we all hear about you know, corporate welfare, terms like that, and throwing money at companies. Uh, and to some extent, we are dealing with incentives to get companies uh, to, tip, to tip the scale toward our state. But when we do it, we only do it when there is a return. There's always a return. And the deals that have been done, next chart, please, uh, have, exceeded, have exceeded the commitments they've made. So on average, the deals hit break even and pay back in less than two years. That might be surprising. When I, when I saw that data, it surprised me. Uh, but on average, less than two years to get the payback. And you can see for our key metrics, uh, the companies that decide to come here, uh, they're successful here. And they uh, dramatically exceed their uh, commitments in jobs, payroll, and CapEx. So those companies have made the choice to locate their business here or to expand here. Uh, not only have they paid back through the tax, new tax revenues in less than two years, but they've exceeded those commitments. So there's a successful track record for the companies that we've entered into agreements with. Next chart, please. Uh, Jobs Ohio doesn't deal with the whole economy. And again, that's the, one of the differences uh, other than being private with the state, the state has broader responsibilities uh, than JO. Jobs Ohio deals with nine sectors plus one, the plus one, uh, we just added a military and federal sector, so it's a public sector. Uh, the other sectors are private, but you can see about a third of the gross state product, about a quarter of uh, employment in Ohio, and about 40% of the payroll. And typically, not typically, always, uh, the companies that are in those sectors that we deal with, there is com competition with other states. Uh, they're typically resilient during resilient sectors during downturns, and they're typically high, higher wage. Next chart. And we've got a wide array of programs and uh, the scope of, of programs offered by Jobs Ohio has dramatically expanded uh, during the DeWine Husted uh, administration. And primarily uh, to meet the demands and the opportunities that have presented themselves in the marketplace. So these are, these are the programs we have loan and grant programs that target the nine sectors plus one. So when we attract businesses here or help businesses expand, it's typically through loans, grants, and on the state side, job creation tax pre uh, credits and other infrastructure uh, vehicles. Uh, but we have uh, investment in job ready sites. The, the Lieutenant Governor referenced innovation districts. Uh, those innovation districts, while there, there's $300 million uh, being invested into uh, three innovation districts, 100 million each. Uh, the other investment, these are catalytic investments. There's an additional $9 billion invested as a result of that catalytic investment. And, and at the end of a 10 year arc, uh, there'll be an additional close to 50,000 new STEM degrees, degreed individuals that'll feed into the workforce. Uh, there'll be billions of dollars of additional uh, research that will turn into intellectual property, that will turn into startup businesses, uh, that will scale through the investment of growth capital. Again, we, we started up a growth capital uh, vehicle that is a sidecar. It's not a fund, it's a sidecar. So as you have opportunities and you're looking for a place to locate uh, or expand your emerging technology business, uh, we have investment vehicles, multitude of them, uh, to help you to be successful here but there's a, a broad array of programs. Uh, and as we calculate all of these, there's going to be over $40 billion of investment over the next five years from all sources. So Ohio is investing and it's investing strategically and it's investing big. So ne next chart, please. In the last two and a half years, 
Uh, we have across all these programs have invested uh, $437 million. That's $37 per capita. Now we don't invest based on per capita. We invest based on the opportunity, but uh, 437 million has been invested, which is an increase of over 60% from the previous uh, uh, like period. So again, we're investing across those programs we just laid out very strategically. So if you're here to look for opportunities in Ohio, you are here at a very, very good time. And it's what we call a generational opportunity. And I'm gonna explain you know, my definition of why it's a generational opportunity. You heard from the Lieutenant Governor. It, uh, it was great to hear him share that story because we're all very excited about this, especially those of us that have been in or around economic development uh, having to deal with a situation that was nearly the opposite of this uh, 20 years ago. So these are the factors. We're getting growing recognition of our business climate. The Lieutenant, Lieutenant Governor mentioned all the work that went in, you know, after uh, going out uh, 20 years ago, having to get our business climate to where it, it, we were competitive. Uh, we are emerging strong from the recent uh, phase of COVID. Uh, we're experiencing significant business growth and our pipeline is even uh, bigger. We'll share a little bit of data on that. There is a post COVID environmental advantage for Ohio and we're investing. So those five, the confluence of those five factors have created this amazing opportunity. So first the recognition of the business climate. Now, this has been 20 years in the making. Uh, many leaders, many, many people, uh, policymakers have gotten to us, uh, gotten to this point. Uh, I met uh, the Lieutenant Governor when he was uh, the Speaker of the Ohio House. I've seen him in action uh, uh, being a key leader to make this happen. But there's a few examples. He referenced the Governor's Cup. We're number one, two consecutive years and the amount of economic development activity. So uh, Ohio is being recognized by businesses out there. Now, uh, there's a Prosperity Cup is essentially the Governor's Cup, but it's more granular on economic factors. And we're number four in the country in site ready programs. Like the point is you can see the box to the, to the right. Uh, back in 2010, we were 43rd uh, best states to do business. Uh, now we're seventh and that number continues to uh, go in the right direction. Next chart. So we're, we're getting recognized for that. We're emerging strong. Here's a few factors that, uh, of why uh, we're emerging stronger. Then we went in to the COVID situation. Moody's and CNN have a proprietary formula for how states are coming back to pre-COVID economic conditions. We're at the very top two of the Midwest, depending on the month. And we are in the teens for both of them out of 50 states in our return to pre-COVID conditions. We had a record year for venture capital investing just three years ago. Uh, just three years ago, we were dead last, 17 out of 17 peer states for early stage venture investing. Uh, we had a record year and we had more than Indiana and Michigan combined. And that number is continuing to go north because for all the additional venture capital that we're investing, we're attracting more investment from external sources, including the coast, but not uh, exclusively for the coast. Record new business filings uh, and uh, again, the state has been financially responsible. So it's almost a photo negative of what we're seeing happen on the coast. The timing is uh, outstanding for Ohio right now. Next chart, please. And it's reflected in the business that's already been closed uh, this year. Uh, so we compared this, the same period, August 2020 to 2021. Every key metric is up. Uh, but I, I like to look at the customer service. It was a disruptive year last year for everyone, uh, but we had the highest cost net promoter, which is how we uh, you know, gauge uh, uh, the experience our clients have when they deal with us, the highest score since we've been recording this data. Uh, and it's a high score period. Some of the best companies in the world uh, don't have a score that high. So I'm very proud of the team, Jobs Ohio team and our, our partners at the Ohio Department of Development. So again, business growth while improving Ohio's reputation as a great state to do business. Next chart. But the pipeline really tells a story. This is business we haven't closed yet, but we're competing for. It, this is across all sectors and in every region in the state. So it's not focused on one area, but uh, we had the team look back at all the data since Jobs Ohio has existed. 
for, for projects with 500 jobs associated with them or more. And an average year, we've competed for five of those companies, that's projects that size. Right now, we've got 43 in the pipeline. So this is just a better year or you know, a bounce back. This is a transformative year that we're seeing. And for, pro and for projects with 1,000 jobs attached to them or more, normal year, we've got uh, two of those that we're competing for. Right now, we've got 19 of those in our pipeline that we're competing for. So it's, uh, it's an exciting year. And I, there's a mega project designation. The uh, administration working with the state legislature uh, provided us a tool uh, uh, to compete for uh, something called mega projects. It essentially expands, extends the, the job creation tax credit from 15 years to 30 years allows us to compete for really big projects. Those are defined as a billion dollars of new CapEx, $75 million of payroll, and an average wage that's three, at least three times that of the minimum wage. Uh, in a normal, a normal year, we might have one of those. Uh, we've got 13 of them in the pipeline right now. So it's, uh, Ohio is the future, and, and the, we, we say that because we can see it in the pipeline. So in a post-COVID environment, Ohio has an advantage. Uh, we have this diverse uh, talent pool, diverse industry base, communities. If you want to live in a suburb, an urban area, or in, in a rural area, uh, you can live in any of those areas, but still commute to the same, the same job and the same company. Can't do that in some of the larger states with more congestion. So it's this balance of affordability, quality of life, location. You know you're all looking for it. We've got the data that shows just how attractive that is and it's becoming for uh, uh, individuals and for businesses. Next chart. And we're seeing it in, uh, that's supposed to be a map of the US under there, but we're, we're seeing it in uh, the governor reference companies coming from the coast, expanding away from the coasts. Uh, and we can see we've already closed business for 25 companies and our pipeline uh, has more than double uh, of that in, in the pipeline today. And next chart, please. And we're seeing with reshoring, again, in this post-COVID environment, this phenomenon of reshoring. Last summer, uh, when we started looking at this, we weren't sure if it was really gonna happen. And what we're seeing now with business that we've already closed, five companies and businesses in our pipeline, it's reshoring and onshoring is absolutely happening and it's real. Uh, and some of the, some of the largest uh, economic development projects that the Lieutenant Governor referenced, we're, we're competing for those right now and they would change uh, Ohio for the next 75 years. But yeah, it's supposed to be a nice map of the world there. Imagine a map of the world with boats and airplanes. All right, next chart. And on top of all this, during the downturn, Ohio, continued and will continue to invest big and strategically. And I, and I won't go through each of these, but that investment is coming across all those different initiatives. Um, so that's probably a good time to break. Um, but the takeaway, uh, the takeaways of Jobs Ohio is unique. It's, uh, Ohio is a great place and business friendly place to do, to do business as evidenced uh, by our net, com uh, our net promoter score that we've got a generational opportunity and that Ohio is the future. That's evidenced by the business we've already closed and our pipeline. And we would love you to be part of it. We've got several colleagues from our sector teams here today uh, to talk to you about both the programs and the nature of our nine plus one of resilient economic sectors. And we want your business. We want you to do business here in Ohio and we appreciate you being here today. Thank you for the opportunity. Come join our 361 firm community of investors and thought leaders. We have a lot of events created by the community as we collaborate on investments and philanthropic interests. Join us.